Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. If you enjoy videos like this as well as species specific care and husbandry videos, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you never miss a video. Today we're going to be talking about what I think are the top 10 display tarantulas in the hobby. Now by a display tarantula, I mean that a tarantula that is beautiful and that stays out in the open a whole lot. <laughs> Now not all of them are going to be really colorful or be extensive webbers, but it's a tarantula that spends most of its time out of its hide on display or have set somewhere prominently in your house so when you have people come visit or just check out your collection, you can almost guarantee this tarantula will be out and impressing people. Now not everybody wants to have as many tarantulas as I have and I completely understand that. So this is just going to be my top 10 list for tarantulas you can add to your collection that have a pretty high probability of being out on display a lot. Now, not all of these tarantulas are going to be beginner tarantulas. There might be some tarantulas that you got to be a little more experienced to have in your collection. But to start off with number 10, I am picking the Formictopus erratus, also known as the Cuban bronze tarantula. Now this is a very gorgeous tarantula with the bronze kind of gold coloration on the carapace as well as the blacks and blues and the red settee. It's truly a unique tea and mine spends a lot of time just kind of hanging out in the open. Of course when it's in pre-mold it will sometimes go into its burrow and hide out there for a few weeks. But usually once it molts it is back out on display looking even better than ever. All right, number nine on my list is going to be an old world tarantula. This is a gorgeous tea and an extensive Weber. The only reason it's not higher up on the list is because I think that maybe my experience is different than some other people's experience out there, where mine stay out on display a whole lot. I know when I made a video on this species, a lot of people were saying theirs spends a lot of time hiding out in their burrow. But since this is my list, just my opinion, we're going to go with number nine, the Harpectera pulchripes or the golden blue leg baboon. Now this is an old world tarantula, it does have some potent venom, but it's not nearly as bad as some of the other old world teas. In fact, this is a tea that I have on my list for a future video for a pretty good species to get as one of your first old world tarantulas. I mean, this tarantula is a gorgeous shade of gold and has those awesome blue legs. Mine spends the majority of its time on top of its web just kind of hanging out in the open. They have an amazing feeding response and usually don't get scared off when I get close or I'm like opening the lid or something like that. I love showing this species off to people who come check out my collection and I just enjoy watching them in general because they're an awesome tarantula. And number eight is another very cool tarantula. This one is a new world tea, but it's also a dwarf tarantula. Now as spiderlings, they do spend a lot of time hiding out in their burrow. They're pretty shy, but I've noticed as they've been getting bigger, inching a little bit closer to that adult size, they spend a lot more time out in the open. They're a lot more brave. Usually they don't run and hide if I disturb their enclosure. <laughs> They're just so freaking cute and cool looking. They gotta be on this list. Now that tarantula, number eight, is gonna be the Cirrocosmus elegans. Now I'm gonna include in this the Rite and the Perismalsi as well because they're all very similar. They're all Cirrocosmus tarantulas, really any tarantula in the Cirrocosmus genus, at least the ones that I have, I'm noticing the same type of behavior. They put up some amazing webs. They have awesome colorations on their abdomen. And the fact that they're dwarf tarantulas, I think makes them even cooler as a display tee because you can really show people the gamut the tarantulas run as far as size. These tarantulas are sweethearts. They are totally one of my favorite all-time tarantulas right now. I just want to collect them all. Now number seven is going to be another old world tarantula and some of you all might think I'm crazy for suggesting this one because technically it's it's an obligate burrower but I've noticed as mine is getting larger you know kind of getting up there in age it's spending a lot more time out of its burrow. In fact it's kind of webbed up the area all around its burrow and will just kind of hang out on the web there. This one's also gotten a lot more brave. It doesn't get me any 
kind of threat poses or, you know, it's not very defensive. Even though it's an old world tarantula, if it feels threatened at all, nine times out of 10, it's running for its burrow. This beautiful bright orange tea is the Orphanacus philippinus. This tarantula is unique because it doesn't look like a lot of other tarantulas. It's kind of got that pill-shaped abdomen, you know, and, and it almost has this kind of velvety orange to it, which is a lot different than the majority of your tarantulas. This one is very cool. People love seeing it. Kind of blows their mind that that's a tarantula someone would have in their collection. I know a lot of people that watch this channel are from the Philippines, so shout out to you guys. This is an awesome tarantula. All right, for number six, we're coming back to the new world, but we're getting up off the ground. This tarantula is multicolored. It's got green, it's got red, it's got black. It spends a lot of time out in the open. Pretty friendly tea, not too hard to take care of. In fact, I made a Karen husbandry video for this tarantula, which I will link up right here. Now this tarantula used to be in the uh, genus Avicularia, but moved about a year ago or so. They changed it to Carabina. This is the Carabina Versicolor. An amazing arboreal new world tarantula, brightly colored, and probably my favorite thing about this tea is that it has such a transformation from a spiderling to an adult. It looks extremely fluffy, it's very, very gentle, and it is always a crowd pleaser. When I post a picture of the Carabina Versicolor on Facebook, it almost always gets more likes than any other tarantula. And even right now, mine's just kind of hanging out in the open doing its thing. So you can't go wrong with that tarantula. Now this next tarantula is a staple in the hobby and it's a tea probably a lot of you will already have. In fact, you may be thinking, Richard, why is this a display tea in your top 10? It's a plain Jane kind of boring brown tarantula. And I probably would have agreed with you up until about six months ago when I really was starting to get into the macro photography and was looking at this tarantula under some serious magnification and was really just kind of blown away with how beautiful it actually is. Sometimes when you just have something for a while and, and you, you kind of get used to it, you don't see the beauty in it anymore because it's become routine and regular. I think that's what happened with me and this tarantula because now it's one of my favorite teas to look at. I could just spend hours watching this tarantula walk around and kind of do its thing because it is just a beautiful tarantula. And the nice thing is it spends so much time out. In fact, mine rarely ever goes into its burrow. Right now, like for the past six months, its burrow has been completely filled up and blocked off and just kind of hangs out doing its thing right there on the top of the layer, not hiding at all. And this tarantula I'm talking about is the Gramistola pulchripes, the Chaco Golden Knee. These tarantulas are fairly inexpensive. As spiderlings and juveniles, they do tend to spend a lot more time in their burrow, but as they get larger, they get a lot more confident and spend a lot more time out in the open. And when people come over, they don't just see a brown tarantula, they're gonna see those bright gold stripes down its legs. And it's just a very cool, sociable, kind of just awesome tarantula. So that's definitely gotta be on my list. Now choosing number four was very difficult. I kept going back and forth. This species or this species? This species or this species? I don't know. I kept writing and rewriting and, and scratching off the list and then putting it back on the list. And then I finally just gave up. I settled on both of them. They're both Brocky Pelma tarantulas. In fact, I keep them right next to my Gremistola Polkripes because it's always guaranteed they're gonna be out on display, ready to be viewed. I like having all of my display tarantulas in very prominent locations in the collection for my own viewing pleasure and for the viewing pleasure of anybody that comes by to visit. So for number four, we're gonna split this one into two. We're gonna call it the Brocky Pelma Homori and the Brocky Pelma Smithy. They're very similar tarantulas anyways. They both got the red and the black, just kind of different patterns. But their husbandry and their behavior and just like all aspects of them are extremely similar. Now my homori can be a little bit of a hair kicker, but, but I'm not taking them out and letting people handle them. We're just looking at them, viewing them from afar, looking at them through their enclosure. And they're extremely cool. They got those bright red colors contrasted with that deep black. And the Brocky Pelma Smithy is so recognizable and such a staple in the hobby. Almost any time someone thinks of a tarantula, that's the one that always pops up in their head first. So I had to make sure that one was definitely on the list. Now number three isn't the most colorful tarantula. In fact, it's kind of just a brown tarantula, but has some kind of pink sete to it. It still is very beautiful. So don't get me wrong there. So the reason I added it to my list in the top five display tarantulas has a lot to do with just its impressive size. The leg span on this one is incredible. Though it's not the biggest T, it is up there. And you mix in that little bit of pink coloration and those really long sete, you've got yourself an amazing tarantula. 
Of course, I'm talking about the Lociadora Periabana, the salmon pink bird eater. If you don't have one of these in your collection, I highly suggest it. I got a care and husbandry video on this channel that you can check out if you want some more information on it. But it is a cool tarantula, very laid back, easy going, and always just kind of stretched out walking around on display. So there's no way I could make a list and not have this tea on there. Now for the number two spot, I was really struggling. I kept going back and forth between number one and number two. Couldn't really decide which order I think they should be in. In fact, I even made a list of all the pros and cons and why I think this species should be, why this one should, and really kind of take my own bias out of it a little bit and just kind of look at it for what it was. So the number two is actually probably one of my all-time favorite tarantulas, and that is the green bottle blue or the chromatopelma cyanopubescens. The reason I love this tarantula so much is not just that it has those bright colorations, it's got its red and its green and, and that very iridescent kind of cool looking blue, but this tarantula is also semi-arboreal. It's a new world tarantula that is out on the ground a lot like a terrestrial, but also likes having branches in there that it can crawl up and make these very cool intricate webs. Now, of course, when it is getting near a molt, it will hide out in those tunnels and I won't see it for a while but that almost just kind of builds the anticipation. I get excited for that day I come home from work knowing that it's molten and it's back out on display looking brighter than ever. Another cool aspect about this tarantula is that as spiderlings, they look a lot different than they do as adults. Similar to the Carabina Versicolor, the metamorphosis from a sling to an adult makes it totally worth it to get a sling and wait for it to grow. So I highly suggest if you're thinking of getting one of these, to go ahead and start with a spiderling. Watch it go through all of its stages and grow up, because even as slings, they spend a lot of time out in the open, and they still put some amazing webs up for such a tiny little spider. Now before I tell you what my number one all-time display tarantula is, I'm gonna throw out a few honorable mentions. These are some tarantulas that almost made the list, but I cut for one reason or another. First honorable mention I'm gonna throw out there is the Postolotheria metallica. You could also throw in that category the Ornata or the Vitata, or really any of those pokies. When they are out on display, they are impressive. They're huge, they've got great patterns, amazing colors, especially the Metallica and the Ornata. But the reason they didn't quite make my list, because they're only out maybe 50% of the time, sometimes even less, they really end up spending a lot of their time kind of in their burrows, kind of hidden in the cork bark or behind some plants. They're not prominently displayed the majority of the time. So even though I love this tarantula and I think it is one of the most beautiful tarantulas out there, I couldn't quite justify putting it on a list for a display tarantula. So on this top 10 list, the pokey's just not gonna make it. Another tarantula that almost made the cut, but not quite, is gonna be the Gremistola pulchra. Now I love this tarantula, it is gorgeous, it is always out on display, and it has that very deep, dark, velvet black color to it, but I didn't wanna have too many Gremistolas on there. I was going back and forth between the pulchra, the pulchripes, and the rosea, and I finally settled on the pulchripes, and I probably regret it already, but for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it as it is, it's gonna be just an honorable mention this time. Who knows, we'll make a video in another year or two and I might, you know, switch it up. We'll see what happens. All right, now for my number one display tarantula. I'm sure some of you guys have already kind of figured it out or you're yelling at your screen right now, cheering for your favorite tea. In fact, one of the reasons I love making top 10 videos like this is because all the comments you guys leave. There's all these suggestions down below. If you should have had this tea on there, I can't believe you didn't include this tarantula. This is my favorite tarantula. How did it not make your list? Or you're saying, that's a horrible tarantula. Why did you add it to the list? It creates some awesome conversations and sometimes there's tarantulas I just forget about. For whatever reason, as I was writing out this video, that just didn't cross my mind and I overlooked it or neglected it and it's awesome to have you guys call me out on that and point it out so if there's a tarantula on my list that you don't agree with be sure and let me know down below in the comments and if I left off your favorite tarantula or a tarantula you think should have been on this especially if they should have been number one don't hesitate to leave a comment down below let me know that let's get a conversation going I want to know what your top 10 tees are now if you like my shirt I do have some of those available in the Amazon storefront it's just kind of like a storefront on uh, amazon.com where I can put all the different shirts and hats and enclosures and pretty much anything tarantula related I got it all 
in one place, kind of broken up into different types of lists. The link to that store is down below in the description. And the cool thing is, anything you buy through that storefront, a small portion of that does come back to help support the channel. All right, so in my opinion, this is not definitive, but my choice for the number one display tarantula is probably gonna be the Theraphosa Sturmy. I know a lot of you are like, oh, no, no, no. and trust me, up until like a month ago, it probably would not have been my number one. But I recently got a female tarantula from one of the viewers. She was kind enough to send that a few other tarantulas to me. And since then it's molted and I've got it in this bioactive enclosure and it's just breathtaking to watch. Just the immense size of this tea the way that it walks around, and also just the beauty of the enclosure that it's in, really move this to the top of my list for the best display tarantula. Now it is just a boring brown tarantula, but the size of this species really kind of sets it in a class by itself. Even showing people some of the most beautiful and technicolor tarantulas that I have in my collection, as soon as they see that Sturmy, they are amazed. Now this isn't a beginner tarantula by any means, and I don't suggest that everybody rush out and grab it. But once you have some experience and, and you know how to keep humidity levels up and you know how to protect yourself from urticating hairs and you're confident enough to deal with a tarantula of that size with that kind of speed, then yeah, this is an amazing display tarantula. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. It means a lot to me and it helps future keepers down the line find this channel. If you wanna support this channel, then check out my website, thetarantulacollective.com and don't forget to join the Facebook group where we can continue the conversation. Now, I will be at the North American Reptile Breeders conference in Tinley Park, Illinois. That's October 12th and 13th. I'll be there with some of the mods from the Facebook group. We'll be hanging out at the Fear Not Tarantulas booth. So come by, say hello, or if you see me walking around with my camera filming a YouTube video, don't hesitate to say hi. Now I know not everybody can make it out, so unfortunately I won't get to see you all there, but I will see you next Tuesday.